Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's talk about another gram-positive organism in Cornobacterium diphtheria. Cornobacterium diphtheria in and of itself is a gram-positive rod that occurs in angular arrangements. Now, what does an angular arrangement mean? Well, you can see in this picture here that they are attached at the ends, uh, in the, and they're in angles. Uh, so this angle here is about of a 60-degree angle, um, and that's how you're going to see these uh, under a microscope. These are transmitted to other human beings via respiratory droplets. Uh, so we have quite a few organisms that are transferred via respiratory droplets. This causes diphtheria, all right? So diphtheria is the disease caused by Cornobacterium diphtheria. Uh, how it does this is via an endotoxin, and that endotoxin is encoded by a beta prophage. That's something to remember about Cornobacterium diphtheria, is it is a beta prophage exotoxin. The exotoxin inhibits protein synthesis by ADP ribosylation of the EF2 factor, which is elongation factor 2. And this leads to possible necrosis in the pharynx, cardiac muscle, and CNS tissue. So this necrosis is important because this is where we get the diphtheria symptoms. So we can see pseudomembranous pharyngitis, which is a necrosis of the pharynx here, and as well as showing some lymphadenopathy alongside of it. This toxin can then be disseminated uh, throughout the body, causing myocarditis, arrhythmias, and neuropathies. And how do we prevent this? Well, we can give a toxoid vaccine. That toxoid goes in and helps prevent diphtheria from occurring. To diagnose corneobacterium diphtheria, we diagnose this by seeing gram-positive rods with a metachromatic granules. Now, the metachromatic granules uh, are also known as volatin granules. A volatin granule or a metachromatic granule is just an intracytoplasmic storage form of some inorganic polyphosphate, uh, and it gives a metachromatic effect, which basically means when we stain this with methylene blue, the granules will appear red. So staining it with blue makes them appear red. And then also a diagnostic criteria for Cornobacterium diphtheria is a positive ELEC test, which tests for the toxin. What we do here is we take a strip of paper that has the antitoxin for diphtheria, and we put it into the auger just underneath the surface. And what happens here is we streak the surface with our diphtheria, and we see some lines that will occur on the paper because the antitoxin and the exotoxin of diphtheria will react with each other and produce some precipitin lines along that filter paper that we put underneath the auger. So if we see those lines on that filter paper, that is considered to be a positive ELEC test for that toxin. You can see here in this picture, this is uh, what Cornobacterium diphtheria looks like uh, on, the, on a leg of a patient. Um, just a very big necrotic lesion there. Um, so let's break down uh, Cornobacterium specifically. Uh, we know bacteria means, but the corny, that stands for club-shaped. The corny is club-shaped, and that's where we have our metachromatic granules that we see on the Waffler media. We also see black colonies uh, under specific cysteine telluride auger. And we treat Cornobacterium diphtheria with an antibiotic, and we can also give a diphtheria antitoxin uh, that will help reduce the effects of that exotoxin. So here's a good way to help remember Cornobacterium diphtheria is using A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So A is your ADP ribosylation. We talked about that as how uh, the exotoxin inhibits our protein synthesis. And specifically, it's uh, ribosylating the elongation factor 2, which we'll get to. That's going to be our E in uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The beta prophage, this is what the exotoxin is encoded by. And then C and D is your Cornobacterium diphtheria. E, as we've mentioned already, is our elongation factor 2. That elongation factor 2 is what is uh, inhibiting protein synthesis via the ADP ribosylation. So these two are connected. And then G is our granules or our metachromatic granules. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.